we doing, everyone? My name is Michael Worden, and if you're new here, well, I gotta say, it's a pleasure to meet you. And, well, it seems as if you're very interested in getting into fighting games. Am I right? Okay, good. You probably answered that question. Now, with fighting games, you may start be playing on a, what they call, let me grab it for you real quick, on a pad controller. But, let me put these away. But, you're probably very aware that there's options. In my head, I like to say there are options that are appropriate for fighting games. Okay? There's pad controllers, there's sticks, and there's leverless controllers, and then there's also some other crazy kind of type of alternative styles of fighting game controllers that there's like some like cube looking thing that's got buttons on the side, and I'm like, well, that's different. But you know, they're very, you know, they claim it's ergonomic, but I don't know the controller. I'm probably going to put a picture, and you're probably hearing my voice if I were to take a picture and show it to you. But I'm going to showcase a few different options and what they look like, and yeah. So, let's get to doing that. Okay, so I'm going to get the first set of things out of the way because, you know, I, I already showcased these. So... A, a beautiful start to playing fighting games, if you're if you're a beginner, if anything, regardless of the fighting game that you play, a pad is a solid start, right? You know, you've had this thing, you, you know how to play with this, you know, your hands are probably comfortable, right? And this is a solid start, you know, inexpensive because, I mean, what the hell do I know? You may not even like playing fighting games and... And, and you don't want to waste your time buying a stick and trying to figure out what's best for you or whatnot. So, this is a solid start. And then, I guess, you know, I guess when you feel like it's time, then you can upgrade to a fighting stick or a leverless or whatever it may be. So, yeah, pads are a solid start. Okay, I'm going to get that out of the way. Solid start. I know that I have a PS4 controller here, but just have a crazy, you know, just have a crazy active imagination that this is a PS5 controller because I know that's kind of the standard as of today. So, yeah, pads are a solid start. It, that's where you want to stay. So, these two things right here, they are considered fight sticks or some like to call, I'm very aware, they like to be called joysticks. These are a nice little upgrade from a, a, a pad controller. So, like, if you want to upgrade from this to this and and get something that's meant to be, you know, that's meant to be played, you know, for fighting games, these are a nice addition to to get because, you know, the 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 the, the controller, the buttons, you know, they're meant to be played on a fighting game, right? This right here is. A whoring fighting stick, a hori, sorry, hori fighting stick. And, you know, obviously this is like a special edition Soul Calibur. I was like super, like, I wanted to play Soul Calibur. I wanted to get good at it. But this is a hori stick. And you, know, you can hear the the little buttons. If you hear the click, that means you're hitting that direction or whatever. So that's a, this is a Japanese stick with Japanese buttons. Uh, they're Hori, 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 Basu buttons or something like that, which the, the traveling of from moment of pressing to the actuation of, you know, your character pressing a, a punch or a kick or something like that, you know, the traveling distance is not that, you know, it's not that far. This here is a Razer Atrix, which has, I believe this is also considered a Japanese lever, and these are what are considered Sanwa buttons, which for me is my ultimate favorite kind of buttons because these are what I've been playing on. 
But do I use this? No, which I will show here in a little bit, but these are some of my buttons and obviously I'm a big fan because according to all the people that have been in the FGC for, for many, many years, longer than I probably have been alive, um, have stated that, you know, your standard arcade cabinet may may have something like this or people who go to who, who you know who go to tournaments and who and who bring something like this this is what they'll use and what's cool about this versus that is that the razor atrix or the razor something it's, it looks like this but this symbol is blue and it's for the playstation is that you can press this nifty little button right here and you can get access to to mod or to fix anything that that may not be working anymore or something like that like when i was super involved with using this stick i wanted like a tighter spring and a bigger actuator so that my traveling distance which is not an issue when you play on pad um when i go to move the stick and i try to do something this will you know you know, you know, this would work, you know, this would, you know, there's not much of a travel distance from neutral to down forward. I know I'm using terms you guys are not aware of, but you know, you know, you know, forward, backwards, like it's, you know, it's not much of a traveling distance. Like this here, you know, they're, they're probably got the standard actuator in there and the traveling distance is much more. So yeah, this right here is a next solid up from a pad controller to this. Now, the next kind of controller that we're going to be looking at are leverless controllers. So this right here is what they call, as I'm going to repeat myself again, a leverless controller or, or as famously known, hitbox controller. And basically, as it's self-explanatory, it's an all-button controller that is meant for fighting games. And I got to tell you guys... I did play on this for about a few months, right? Um, I, I met a buddy um, over the internet in a Tekken group, and I asked him what he played on, and he said he played on this. And I kind of, you know, was like, well, I'm, I don't want to play on this. I kind of want to have an upgrade. So I kind of asked him, I'm like, what do you play? What do you recommend? And I kind of thought he was going to steer me in the direction of something like this, which I pretty much got, like... But I pretty much got at the time when he told me what he uses, which is this. And he goes, yeah, he goes, I play in the hitbox. And he goes, it makes the playing experience so much better. You can do certain things that, that help you out. And I can't say enough positive things about this model of an all-button arcade. Con you, know, you, you get it. You know, an all-button leverless controller you know it's it's perfectly sized it's not too big not too small um personally if you were to ask me um if you're gonna ask me would you travel with this um at the time if i didn't know about what's called the junk food arcade the junk box arcade food box um uh head box controller which is a tad bit it's way more smaller than this and it's very portable, then I would have said, yes, th this is great to take to, you know, to your local scene and stuff, but, but for me, this is a good at home setup to use. And then if you wanted to get like a junk, junk box, food, arcade, all controller fight stick, get that for, for your traveling purposes when you go to your local scene and stuff. But I love this thing. And the reason why is I'm going to tell you why, and at first it's going to seem really strange and really weird, but you'll understand when I explain it. This is left, down, right, or or it's going to change vice versa on how you, on, depending on what direction you're facing in the game. And this is up, and obviously these are your action buttons that you're probably aware of what they are. And the reason why... This up button is up is down here and not up here, or not it made a difference, is that when you go to do what's called a QCF, if you're new to games, it's a motion that's going this way, which is a quarter circle forward towards the opponent or a quarter circle forward this way. 
when you go to hit it, you're not accidentally gonna like, you know, if you say if you over go up too much, it, you're gonna, you might accidentally hit the up button. This here, when you hit quarter circle forward, you're gonna hit quarter circle forward and you're not gonna go, oops, you know, you're, you're gonna know you're gonna hit quarter circle forward and that you're not gonna have, you know, a mistake or anything like that. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's why I love this hitbox. I've had this hitbox a little, I got this hitbox a little after I had this one. And this is actually an Xbox version of the hitbox. And if you guys wanna know how old this thing is, give you guys a little bit of a hint. The newer hitboxes don't um, don't come with a cord that's already attached. They come where you have to attach it, which is like this one right here. Yeah, I kinda have to take the wire and attach it. But this is like stuck on there with a nice braided cord. And obviously this thing has been, I've been using it for six or seven years now, I think. Maybe five to six, I might be overshooting it. But yeah, this thing is great. It's excellent to use. It, it, for me, it's comfortable and I can't say anything else better about it so yeah oh and by the way before I exit this part of the, exit this part of the video the, apparently this has what's called SOCD buttons so when you hit back and forward um it cancels out and it's just neutral and, and your character will just stand still and then when you hit down and up it will I think it'll make the opponent still stand there or or still jump. I'm not too sure, but I know the, the what happens when you hit these two at the same time, it's pretty much the same. Or I, I kind of forgot what happens here, but yeah. So that's it for the controllers that you can get when it comes to playing fighting games. And I know there's some very, very different things and different options and ideas. And yes, I'm very aware that there is all kinds of dirt and and that dead skin from all the years of me using this thing because it still works it's still working with me and i love this thing and i've been taking good care of it so yeah and by the way i understand this is covered in dust and this is covered in dust so you know roast me in the comments for my dust covered toys that i have here so uh yeah now with all that being said about all your options when it comes to playing with a certain controller for a fighting game I, for what I'm about to say is there is no right or wrong way about how you approach for a controller with a fighting game because I know that the niche about when it comes to controllers is wide range and to me how I like to look at it is that there is no right or wrong answer direction about about how you approach with the controller that you're using when you play a fighting game because at the end of the day you're either going to pick a pad, which is an excellent start because even if you're questioning the fact if you want to even start playing a fighting game, well, get the fighting game that you want to play, start using the pad, and if you like the pad and you want to rock out with the pad, then by all means, knock yourself out. There's many pro players out there, like I believe one is named Anakin, uh, one is named Sparrowgen. Uh, these are both Tekken players. Anakin is a jack player. It's a jack player, Sparrow Jin. He is a he is an Eddie main from from many many years of playing Tekken, and those two, notably from what I know, they all play on pad. And if you want to rock out, if you want to rock out with a pad, well, there's your inspiration right there. Those are two players right there that play the game, and probably more than likely, if you go to your fighting your local fighting scene, <clears throat> you're probably going to see several several people with 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 an xbox a playstation controller so that you know because that's what they want to rock with and then when it comes to fight sticks and leverless controllers that is very a very tricky sh shopping experience because at the end of the day you're going to be paying for the name that comes with the product because as funny as as funny as i'm going to make this sound you're just paying for a very expensive and sturdy shoebox that comes with the buttons that you're going to want, okay? Like that Hori fighting stick with the fancy uh with the fancy art, that's a Hori stick, a Hori H O R I stick that 
the buttons are Hori Haibasu and they come with less traveling distance. And then that Razor flight stick and the Hitbox flight sticks, which is an all button controller, those two come with all button, uh, um, they come with, not all button, they come with Sanwa buttons and those are the, the tournament standard. And so you got different fighting stick companies that, that'll give you the same type of buttons. And, and like I said, you're just paying just for the name. So you, you got a hitbox that's got Simul buttons and then you got the Razor Flight stick that also has Simul buttons on it. And what's special about like that Razor Flight stick is that it comes with a latch on the front that it's just super easy to get into so that if you want to mod anything, if you got to change a button up because something, you know, because something fell short or you want to uh, make modifications to your actual Japanese lever, which I also know that there's also a Korean lever too, which is very different. I don't own, I know those are fairly expensive. And then when it comes to you getting a Korean lever, I know you can kind of get a golden Itaki lever, golden Korean lever, which is, I don't have and I don't care enough to cover it. But, yeah, there's no right or wrong answer. Yet, at the end of the day, you're going to be paying for the name. How expensive do you want to pay for the shoebox for the parts and the wires that go into it? And and even, like, with, with, with an all-button controller, with that hitbox that I own, it comes with all silo buttons. But, like, with that junk food arcade leverless controller that I'm going to get... It's shipping right now, which God knows how long it's going to take to get here. Um, there's even differences amongst that. Like, the hitbox that I have, it's 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 an all-button controller, and it comes with sound buttons, but the build, the box is about maybe an inch or two thick, and inside of it, you got wires, you got cords that are going through it, and then with, and then with, with the junk food hitbox that I'm going to get, to travel with it comes with like cherry cherry switches on it like like on a key, like on a keyboard like on a gaming mechanical keyboard it, those buttons are just like that so yet again there's no right or wrong way there's different kind of builds so if you want to go for sound buttons or keyboard buttons for your controllers then then by all means rock with it and like i said you're paying for the name how expensive of a shoebox that you want and the and which is more important is the is the controller and the buttons and you want a lever you want all buttons and all that and, and all that goodness so i hope that this year will help you know uh turn the gears in your head for what you're interested in and like i said there's no right or wrong way it's all preference and yeah so uh with that i'm out of here and uh i hope you enjoy your fighting game experience if you're new. And with that, I'm out of here. So see ya!